we bless you in this place. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Rose of Sharon. Adonai. Elohim. Jehovah. We exalt you in this place. And we give you free reign. Holy Spirit, speak like you want to speak. Do what you want to do. Demonstrate how you want to demonstrate. In the name of Jesus. Right now we arrest any unsettled spirit in this place. In the name of Jesus. We prepare the ground for the successful planting of the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We cast everything aside. We cast our agenda aside. We cast everything aside so we can get our minds stayed on you. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, we honor you. Hide me behind the cross that they will see none of me but only you. Speak to their hearts, O oh Lord. Speak to their hearts, O oh Lord. Speak to their hearts, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I give honor to our Lord and Savior on this morning. Hallelujah. Who is definitely the lifter of my head. I give honor to the Holy Spirit that leads and guides and directs my path each and every second of the day. Hallelujah. We thank God for, even though it's a little rainy outside, it's still a new day, is it not? Huh? He gave you the activities of your limbs. He allowed you to rise up on today. So today is a new day. And according to the scriptures, it says grace and mercy. Hallelujah. His faithfulness. Hallelujah. He saw fit to allow you to see another day. Oh, y'all going to be quiet on me? That's all right. I know what to do. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless him. We give honor to the shepherd of this house. Come on, y'all. Let's bless Pastor. Yeah. My angel, my honey, on my peanut butter. Uh huh. I like honey. You like jelly. Uh huh. My honey and my tea. I give honor to our pastor on this morning. Hallelujah. I count it a privilege and an honor to stand before the people of God on this Palm Sunday. I give honor to the elders in the house, to the ministers, to the deacons, to everyone under the sound of my voice. We say welcome to all our visitors this morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on Unity Sunday. Hallelujah. We're so honored that you chose to come and bless the Lord with us on this day. It's Unity Sunday, amen? amen? And according to the calendar, it's also Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. Everybody got their palms? Did everybody get a palm when you came in? Yes? No? No? They're out there? They were supposed to pass them out. What happened, ladies? Hallelujah. Ladies are sleeping on the job this morning. Hallelujah. He's yet sits on the throne. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, it's Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. And on Friday night at midnight, started the for the Jewish calendar, Passover. Hallelujah. Palm Sunday for Christians is a day celebrated for honoring Jesus Christ's victory 
victorious entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey to observe Passover. Can I take my time? While this was a joyful, special occasion for his followers, this event took place towards the end of his days on earth before being crucified. Palm branches. Can we wave them? Palm branches is a symbol of victory, triumph, peace, and eternal life. Someone shout Palm Sunday. When the time came for the deliverance of the nation of Israel out of Egypt, uh -huh. the house of bondage, God gave Moses specific instructions concerning the, work, the means of deliverance. Uh -huh. Someone shout deliverance. deliverance. It was in the message of the Passover lamb that Moses actually preached the gospel to the Israelites. And all could either accept or reject the gospel message. The heads of each household were to take a lamb of the first year on the tenth day of the first month and set it aside until the fourteenth day. Stay with me. In the evening of the fourteenth day, the lamb was to be killed and his blood sprinkled on the lintel and the two side posts of the household door. The household itself was to feast upon the body of the lamb roasted on an open fire with bitter herbs and unleavened bread. They were to eat it in haste and be dressed ready to leave Egypt at the midnight hour. At midnight, someone shout midnight. midnight. At midnight, the deaf angel would pass through the land in every house that didn't have the token of blood on the door and the lintel would suffer judgment. This judgment was the death of the firstborn of both male and beast. For the Lord, the word of the Lord says, When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. The feast of Passover originated in the passing over of the angel of death over the blood sprinkled doors of the Israelites or any Egyptians who care to believe the gospel word. Come on, look at that person sitting next to you. You don't have to touch them, but look at them and say, the blood, the blood. still works. Still works. Uh -huh. Come on, someone shout at the top of your lips. Lord, Lord do, not do not pass me by. There's so much about the Passover and Palm Sunday that I could go into, like the purpose of the male lamb, or the purpose of being without spot or blemish, or how you are supposed to prepare the house for the feast. How are you supposed to call all your household for the feast into one house? Someone shout, unity. unity. I could explain to you how you're supposed to eat the lamb and what to eat with it, or how how we could talk about the importance of midnight, or about how none of the bones shall be broken, and the list goes on and on and on. I could even go into the types, the symbols, and the numerology. Come on, right. <coughs> Nevertheless, it would take all day, tomorrow, and next week. But I know y'all want me to do all that. So I ask the Holy Spirit, what is it you want to say to your people on this Unity Sunday? Turn with me in your Bibles to the Old Testament. Y'all know me, I love the Old Testament. To the book of Exodus, chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verses 2 to 13. And I'm going to read it out to the New Living Translation, but I still want to ask if you will rest to your feet as we acknowledge the word of the Lord. Exodus chapter 12, verses 2 to 13. And the word of the Lord reads as thus. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole community, someone say unity. Unity. 
of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Some would say unity. unity. Uh -huh. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be a year old male, either a sheep or goat with no defects. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. Mm -hmm. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. That same night they must roast the meat over and fire and eat it along with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. Verse number nine. Do not eat any of the meat raw or boil the meat. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, don't water down the word. That's another sermon. <laughs> the whole animal, including the head, the legs, internal organs, must be roasted over a fire. Mm -hmm. Do not leave any of it until the next morning. Burn whatever is not eaten before morning. Uh -huh. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. Right. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign, a marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will. Uh -huh. When you see I will in the scriptures, that's a promise. I will pass over you. Someone shall do not pass me by. The plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Now turn over to Psalms 23, our key verse, verse number 5. We're just going to look at the very beginning of that particular verse. Psalms 23, verse 5. The A clause of that verse says, Thou preparest a table before. We're going to stop right there. Right. Thou prepares a table before me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So in my inquiring Elder Richard, he brought to my attention the table. I know y'all sitting there like, it's Palm Sunday. We got branches. So what about the table? Y'all stay with me, all right? If I was to use a theme or a title, it would be Meet Me at the Table. Okay. Not me. Meet him, Meet him yeah. at the table. Uh huh. Exodus 25, 23 is where the word table is first mentioned in the Bible. We know the first use of a word is always significant. And here we see the same is true. In the book of Genesis, we find the account of man's ruin by sin. When man falls, communion with God is broken. Here in Exodus, we are given a picture of fallen man redeemed by the grace of God. We see God's grace coming to fallen man to reestablish the destroyed lines of communion. God provides the table for his priests in his sanctuary. All of this tells us that God has prepared a table in Christ for his redeemed people. Someone says, the table. The table, mm -hmm. the table we learned, is constructed by divine pattern, 
Remember we talked about it in Bible class? It's made of what kind of wood? Shittim wood. Shittim speaks of sinless, incorruptible, and perfect humanity of Christ. Stay with me. This table signifies the Lord Jesus Christ himself as the bread of life to his people. And it points to the table of the Lord or the communion of the New Testament church, the body of Christ. This table is what David had in mind when he declared, Thou prepares a table before me. The Holy Spirit says on the day he is calling us to meet him at the table. Look at your neighbor and say, meet him at the table. Now look at the other neighbor and say, there is power, there is power. At, the table. at the table. Ah, we going somewhere, we going somewhere, we going somewhere. The Lord communed with his priests through the bread. They were partakers of him. What we eat becomes a part of our being. So ask your neighbor, what have you been eating lately? Mm -hmm. Hold that thought. New covenant, the Lord's table, the communion. See, he says some of us take communion as just something to do. We take it as a ritual, as something that we just do. Uh huh. But he said each time that we are asked to come to the table, we must come with appreciation. We must come with reverence. We must approach the table with humility. Why? Because there is power at the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, meet him at the table. See, in the New Testament communion, this is the same as the Passover meal. Moses was given specific instructions. God told them what to do, how to do it, how to prepare, how to eat it, and it all boiled down to obedience. Obedience caused deliverance to come to families. Obedience caused deliverance to come from bondage. Obedience caused deliverance to come from sickness and diseases. Oh, come on, someone shout. It's all about obedience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is power in the purpose of the Passover was to pass over. The purpose of communion is to do it in remembrance of him. There's power at the table. However, we take this lightly. He said, when you meet me at the table, miracles take place in your lives. When you meet me at the table, deliverance takes place in your lives. Come on, someone tell that person next to you, it's time to meet him. At the, at the table. So one thing that the Holy Spirit brought to, to my forefront real quickly is, he says, at the table, you have to connect your faith with physical things. Y'all get that tomorrow morning. <laughs> See, everything in the Bible is according to faith. Is it not? Everything in the book is according to faith. But the communion table is the only thing that is physical. Come on. So he said when we come to the table, we have to bring our active faith to connect come on. with the physical. Yeah, right. Come on. That's good. Okay, y'all still y'all still not with me. Come on. Okay. He said by faith. He said he has set it up. That our faith can touch and feel the physical at the table. Active faith is now made visible. Yes. Uh huh. Come, take the bread, the physical. The bread represents his body. You can touch it. Faith connected to physical things. Okay, y'all don't believe me? Turn over to John 1.14. John 1.14 says, and the word was made flesh. And what did it do? It dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when you activate your faith at the table, anything can happen at the table. Okay, that's three people got it. Uh-huh. God is so orderly, orderly. He did not desire just for us to come to the table alone. He said, no, bring the whole family to the table. Someone shout, unity. unity. At 
my desire that the whole household be saved? Yes, Lord. But, but, but wait a minute. Come on. Elder James, yes. I was reading in the, in the scriptures. And I found out that uh, it was not just the Lord's table. But there was two tables. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? No. Oh, okay, good. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me show you. Verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified because it is just like so good. It says, it's the cup of blessing which we bless at the Lord's table, not a sharing in the blood of Christ. Come on. Indeed it is. It's the blood which we break, not a sharing in the body of Christ. Indeed it is. So he began to talk to me about that word, sharing. Y'all married folks know about sharing. When you become as one, you share your life with that person that you're married to. Amen? You're now connected with that person. Amen? So when you become intimate with one another, now your sharing has gone to another level. Uh-huh. So when you partake of the bread, which is his body, and you partake of the blood, which is in the cup, you are now partaking of his body. You are now partaking of his body and his blood. Now you are sharing his life. Bread, the body. Cup, the blood. You share of a person. Now, I also know that you can also be legally married, but the marriage may not have been consummated. You know, you know that. that mm -hmm. So that means you can be in the house together and be separate. There's no connection. Uh huh. So when you come to the table of the Lord, when you partake of his body and drink of his blood, now you're partaking of his life. Now there's a connection. Y'all with me? Okay. So I found out. I found out. Now jump down in that same chapter to verse 21. Again, I'm going to read out and amplify. It says, you cannot drink both the Lord's cup and the cup of demons. You cannot share uh -huh, in both the Lord's table and the table of demons, therefore becoming partners with them. There's two tables. Uh-huh. So let, let, let me let me let me let me explain something. So you wonder why it's so much hell in your life. Uh -huh. You wonder why stuff that you prayed about didn't go away. You wonder why you fasted. You gave up all your stuff. You did the Daniel fast. You read the scriptures. You did everything else. And you wonder why stuff still keeps going on. Well, on Sunday, you partaking. From the Lord's table. On. But on Monday, on Monday. Uh -oh. you go to the demon's table. Now, 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 I try to find, you know, you know how they used to see them little army men? Yeah. <laughs> now, I started to call my baby girl and say, can you have Jacob bring me some figurines? But I don't want my baby to think that his figurines were demons, so I didn't do that. <laughs> so I went to Walmart and I found something else. I found these little creatures. And there have been there there are dungeons and dragons. One of them is called Dro Elf Ranger. One is called Dragonborn Cleric. One is called Human Fighter. And one is called Mind Flayer. So what are you saying? This is what the Lord is saying. That when you partake of my life, Come on. when you share in my suffering, when you partake of my body, the blood, and drink the the my, when you partake of the blood, the bread, the bread, my body, that when you're alive, and when you partake of the blood out of my cup, you are partaking me. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Now the scripture.
scripture says, do this as often. Uh -huh. Often. Come on. In remembrance of me. Right. Now I know some churches do it once a month. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some churches do it once a quarter. But I'm here to tell you that if you find yourself keep going to the devil's table, you better partake of this every single day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Come on. Stuff, but it, but it, that's coming. Come on, right. Right. <laughs> so we're here and we're partaking. But as soon as mm -hmm. I ain't even gonna give you a Monday, mm -hmm. an hour mm -hmm. after you leave church, yeah. oh, you get a text message uh -oh. from the booth ad. No one good know where you single, mm. but yet and still. Yeah. You got to fulfill your needs. So you step on over to the table of demons. And you partake. Okay. I'm keeping it real. It's Palm Sunday. And we want to roll these, these palms of triumphant victory. When I'm going to help y'all stay there. Uh-huh. So instead of just partaking on Sunday and being... Feeling real, real good. We're going to get out of operating in our emotions. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to that fifth level, that soul, where we can operate in our spirit. Uh -huh. But, 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 I just, I just want to get on that check line. I just want to watch a little pornography. It ain't going to hurt nobody. It's just me all by myself. You done left the Lord's table. And now you're partaking. Now you are sharing the table of demons. When you share, it becomes part of you. When you partake, that's what you, when it says sharing, it means partaking. You now have digest. It is now within you. It's now part of you. But then when you go over here, you wonder why things is happening. You don't partake. Come on. You wonder why things be going south. You don't partake. Come on. You wonder why, well, wait a minute. I need to pray. I did fast. But then you over here dipping and dabbing. Mm -hmm. mm. You cannot drink both the Lord's cup and the cup of demons. I didn't, I, I didn't make that up. Ain't that in the scripture? Yeah, yeah. that's the scripture. Uh huh. You cannot share in both. Now, what does scripture talk about when you're trying to do both? Oh, somebody know that scripture. <laughs> tables. Two is a number of witness. Two is a number of agreement. Two is a number also of division. There's two tables. Because some of the stuff that happens is because of the two tables. The purpose of the table Again, it's to share the life. He said we lost sight, we lost sight of the meaning of this table. We've gotten comfortable. It's became a ritual. It's become just something to do. It it, it has became, you know, for some places, it looks pretty when it's decorated nice. Now flip over with me to chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. We're going to look at verses 23 and 26. I'm going to my seat. And we're going to read 
that out of the living translation. It says, for this is what the Lord himself has said about his table. And I have passed it on to you before. Now we know that he's talking to the Corinthian church. He's talking to a bunch of Christians. He ain't talking to sinners. He's talking to Christians. That on the night when Judas betrayed him, the Lord Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Yeah, come on. Uh -huh. In the same way, he took the cup of the wine after supper saying, this cup is the new agreement between God and you that has been established and set in motion by my blood. Do this in remembrance of me whenever you drink it. Verse 26. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the message of the Lord's death. That he has died for you. Do this until he comes again. See, what you, when, you, when you have this, you got to have a want-to spirit. When you decide to really, really come to the table, he says that when you partake of me, there's victory at this table. But you got to activate your faith. When you partake of this table, deliverance takes place. But you got to your faith. When you partake of this table, healing takes place. Sickness it takes place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. When, you partake when you partake of this table, yes. your crooked becomes straight mm -hmm. when you partake of this table. <laughs> Doors that man has closed, God opens yes. when you partake of this table. Yeah. When you partake of this table, you have victory over everything. When you partake of this table, when you share in his body, when you share in his blood, you are now sharing his life. He says at this table, it's a place of authority. Come on. At this table, it's a place of fellowship. Right. At this table, it's a place of unity. Yeah. At this table, it's a place of covenant. Come on. At his table. You know, sometimes we find ourselves trying to connect to the wrong things, trying to connect with the wrong people, trying to connect with the what's in, what's most popular. But if that connection is not part of his table, you are really disconnected. Because the opposite of do this in remembrance of me, that word remembrance, the opposite of that is dismember. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, come on. Uh-huh, uh-huh, 3 o'clock in the morning. It's going to ding, ding. I got it down. So when you don't partake of the table correctly, because the scriptures does say don't do it unworthily, uh, does it not? That means if you're uh, an illegal alien trying to partake of his table, he said sickness and death will come upon you. The whole purpose for the blood that was on the door, uh huh, it was at the top, which means on the lintel, which means your mind. It was on the side of the door, which means your heart. No blood was on the floor, so you can't trample on his blood. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross was for the remission of your sin.
of me. So every time you come to the table, I don't know about y'all, but every time you come to the table and I begin to remember what a wretched soul, my dirty, filthy rags. You know, I, I, I thought I had it going on. But when I came to the table and began to partake, he began to show me some things that was not of him. So the only thing I could holler was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my light rolled away. It was there at the cross that I received my sight. Now, I'm happy all the days. Any happy folks in here? Female 
comfort. Y'all men have moved sweetness too. Don't get it twisted. Men go through menopause too. I'm in the medical field, I know. Ain't no once a year, don't you try. Once a month. to meet you at the table. 
He has set a place just for you at the table. Won't you dine with him? Won't you sup with him? Won't you allow him to be king of kings of your life and lord of lords? Won't you come in the house for once permanently and be covered under the blood? It's only in the blood that you can live, move, and have your being. Because there's power in the blood. There's power at the table. There's power when you partake of his body. There's power over every sickness and disease. Every promise he has promised you is fulfilled at the table. Every promise. Y'all know the promises he made? Those promises in the scriptures? That you'll be the head and not the tail? You'll be the lender and not the borrower? You know the promises that says that through a troop you can run over and leap over a wall? You know the promises that say you can go through the fire and you will not be burned? You can go through the water and you will not drown? You know those promises that, say that he said that he would not withhold any good thing from you? You know the promises that he said he is your shepherd. You shall not. You can only come to the table and bring the word back to his remembrance because you are a part of sharing his life. You can't remind him of his word if you're over at this table. Because now you don't came from up under the blood. And you're at somebody else's house. So on today, this Palm Sunday, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Let us be a unified church. Let us be found in the house. Let us be not tossed to and fro by every opinion, by every wind and doctrine. In Jesus' name. If everyone can stand to your feet, I'm just going to do a corporate prayer. today that the heart was ministered to on today we pray oh God that as they saw the two tables presented as they read in the scriptures the two tables that are in your word that they are choosing ye this day whom they're going to serve we pray right now for that woman. We pray right now for that man who has not yet committed themselves unto you. Fulfilling that they still have things they need to do, places they need to go. We pray right now for their soul. We pray that you arrest them right where they are, right where they stand. That they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? We pray right now in the name of Jesus that as they look at these two tables, that they will make a conscious decision that they too must make a decision that I have to choose which table I will partake of. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. That as you knock at their heart, that they will answer. That as you knock at their heart, they will open the door. We pray right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you begin to speak to their spirit, man. That you begin to talk to them like never before. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray. We pray, oh God, that someone will cry out, what must I do to be saved? We pray, oh God, that you said in your word that you are married to the backslider. We pray that you call them home in the name of Jesus. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that where they're standing at, oh God, that they will yield their members unto you like never before. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God. We be still in your 
presence as you minister to us as you speak to us as we recommit ourselves unto you as we surrender our all unto you we yield we yield we yield in the name of Jesus God we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will walk as the head and not the tail. That they will be more confident in you like never before. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit that dwells within begin to lead and guide them into all truth. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that even as they're sitting, as they're standing and listening to this song, oh God, that you will begin to pull at their heart, Father, like never before. That in the name of Jesus, while every head is there and every eye is closed, we love you, oh God. We love you, oh God. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your body. We thank you, oh God. Take joy, my King. In every surrender heart. In every surrender soul. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name.